again with this very difficult room. And so we start chapter five. Mm. Faith brings joy. Are y'all starting this from the beginning? Because I don't want to have to keep teach reteaching faith that it's the proper call and the proper walk. It's not just what you say with your lips or what you think your heart is saying. It's what you do. It's like somebody says, I love my wife. You can tell your wife that you love your wife. Honey, I love you. But in the meantime, you're plotting her death. So you can collect the life insurance and marry your lover. You said that you love her. You said you love your wife, but do you really love your wife? That's what faith is. Faith is tangible evidence of your salvation. It's the evidence of the Holy Spirit. That's Hebrews 11. Faith is the proper call. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. That's Romans 10, 17. And the word of God is Jesus. That's John 1, 1 through 3. And verse 14 in John 1. And Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. That's John 10, 26, 27, 28, 29. And John the Baptist said, one will come after me that will baptize with the Holy Spirit. And fire. And that, I think I have misspoken and said that's Matthew 3.10. It's Matthew 3.11. Matthew 3.11, King James Version, Bible Gateway. Yep, that's it. So... Every time I go over it, I know if y'all follow me daily, y'all are getting sick of hearing it. Therefore, since we have been made right in God's sight by the proper call and the proper walk, we have peace or faith. We have peace with God because of what Jesus Christ, our Lord, has done for us because our and what does he do? Well, he died on the cross. Then he calls you. By the Holy Spirit. Now, Jesus is God and the Holy Spirit is God. Holy Spirit is Jesus. Jesus is the truth. Holy Spirit is the truth. They're slivers of God. They are pathways. Um, tiny ways in which the almighty God communicates with us in human form. We could not absorb or handle all of God, but he sends a little piece of himself in a human form named Jesus. And then in spiritual form, name the Holy Spirit. But it's God. Because of our proper call and proper walk faith, Christ has brought us into this place of undeserved privilege. That's right. You don't deserve it with your good heart and your free will decision. It's grace, isn't it? It's him choosing you from before the foundation of the world. It is extremely undeserved. Where we now stand and we confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing God's glory. We can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials for we know that they help us develop endurance. Ooh. This is kind of a famous passage. It's with waxes poetic and you see it highlighted in both New Living and King James. Let's read it. By whom also we have access by faith into his grace. There it is. Said better in the King James, grace is favor. By, by definition, it's favor. It's God choosing you from before the foundation of the world. Previous chapter, Ephesians 1, 4, and 5. Or the grace passage, Ephesians 2, 8, 9, and 10. 10 being the key verse that they didn't ever give you in the fake pulpits. They rattle off 8 and 9 and go about their business of lying to you. By whom we also have access by the proper call, proper walk, faith, into his favor or his grace, wherein we stand and rejoice in hope. What is hope? Your hope, you're saved. You hope, you're saved. Faith is a substance of things hoped for. Faith is tangible evidence of your salvation. Joyce in the hope of our salvation of the glory of God. 
or and rejoice in salvation of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope or salvation. The best we have of salvation is hope. We hope we are sheep. We don't know for sure. That's what keeps us repenting. If I didn't, since I don't know for sure, if I, let me rephrase it. If I knew for sure, I might go get drunk and have sex and not even think twice about it, which is what they do in the fake pulpits. They tell you it's okay to do that because you're not saved by your works. No, you're saved by grace, but your works will follow if you're a sheep. Faith without works is dead. It's not real faith. Faith is tangible evidence. That's James 2, uh, 14 through 26. And hope. Maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto who? Us, the sheep. <laughs> Not the whole world. For when we, remember Jesus said, I only came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And we who are not Hebrews are considered or referred to as grafted in Jews. Romans 11. That study is on my playlist. Scroll all the way down my playlist and watch Romans 11. And while you're down there, might as well watch, watch the Romans 11. Uh, seven study also we'll be getting to that soon won't we because today we started chapter five for when we were yet without strength in due time christ died for the ungodly for scarcely for righteous man will one die yet per adventure for a good man some would even dare to die but god commendeth his love toward us sheep 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 in that while we sheep sheep were yet sinners christ died for us us sheep not the whole world jesus said i only came for the lost sheep of the house of israel israel is the church and the church is israel non-hebrew church members are considered or called grafted in Jews. We are grafted into the vine. For if when we were enemies, not Hebrews, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Let's get into that word 511 hollywood named a movie after it they're always making fun of the bible or using biblical words to name their movies i don't think i've ever looked up atonement and so, I'm curious, George. It's feminine, so I think it has to do with the bride of Christ or the church. Exchange of the business of money, exchangers, exchanging equipment. Well, that's the usages. Adjustment of difference, reconciliation, restoration to favor. In the New Testament, the restoration of favor of the favor of God to sinners that repent and put their trust, this is obviously written as if you have free will, in the expiation. What is that word? In the expiatory death of Jesus. Oof. Oofa. Let's go first definition. Serving to expedite, trust in the expediting death of Jesus. 
Let's go ahead and do pronunciation. Pronunciation. This guy cracks me we up. We are looking at how to pronounce ah. this word, as well as how to say more yes, interesting and related you. words in English, so make sure to stay tuned. Yeah, in no doubt about that. Learning. There are two different ways of pronouncing this word, oh. either as expiatory, Ooh. expiatory, Ooh. or mm. as expiatory, That's expiatory. Pretty much, I think that might have been what I said. Expiatory, and now expiatory. Trust in the expiatory death of of Christ. I'm sure I didn't pronounce it like that. Anyway, definition, it says exchange, restoration to divine favor. What is that divine favor? It's grace. So restoration or reconciliation. It's It's you being reconciled. I guess it's through the repentant process. Atonement, you're atoning for your sins, you're reconciling your sins through God's favor. This is really, in my opinion, I could be way off. This is God beating the world out of you. When God drags you through the repentant process or the justification process, for whom he did predestinate, then he also called, whom he called, he also justified, whom he justified, he also glorified. So justification and sanctification is. It's that repentant process, because after you get the call, then you go through that repenting tribulation process. So when you're going through the repentant tribulation process, that's how you get reconciled with God. And of course, God loves you because you're a sheep, and he knew you from before the foundation of the world. He ordained you to be a sheep. You were born in the world lost. Then you get the call from the Holy Spirit. And then you start becoming reconciled. In other words, God makes you earn the favor that he loves you and gave you, if that makes sense. That's my best explanation on atonement based off their definitions and usages. Let's just see what they say normal speak. What is atonement definition in the Bible? It says to atone is to suffer the penalty of sin. So yeah, so your sin nature, you're a sinful person, but now God's beating the world out of you. So he starts to reconcile. You start to earn that favor, thereby removing the effects of sin. And how do you do that? By repenting. Do you repent on your own? No, the Lord beats the world out of you. Hebrews 12, 6 through 8, for whom the Lord loveth. Well, I thought he loved everybody. No, for whom the Lord loveth. Jesus said only came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. For whom the Lord loves, he locks them down and beats the world out of them. That's Hebrews 12, 6 to 8 explanation. The effects of sin from the repentant sinner. That's what we're talking about, repenting. It's the repentant process. That's your atonement, your reconciliation, sinner, and allowing him or her to be reconciled to God. That's what we said, right? But we did it the nuts and bolts way. We looked it up in the Hebrew and looked up definitions and Bible usages and and then used what we know in truth. All right, we are going to move on to, we're going to finish Revelation 6, I think. I think. Yeah. So we just finished the pale horse yesterday, and now when we opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God. And the word of God is Jesus. So they were slain for Jesus, weren't they? That's right. And God made sure that they or we all got slain. And for the testimony which they held, and they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost Thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth. So you've already gotten moved over from. And I guess this is part of the pale horse is the great tribulation, but you moved all the way past the abomination of desolation into the great tribulation, just like that. 
and so but later see revelation is the same story told over and over it comes in waves it's not in order from chapter six onward really this is john and everything he's seeing in real time and he puts it down but he doesn't see everything in real time in in perfect order he sees it in different ways diff the same situation he'll see it three or four different times but the great tribulation is told to us in the abs extreme abstract in uh revelation 11 by the two witnesses for we are kings and priests and then uh revelation 13 matthew 24 1 through 37 second thessalonians 2 1 through 11 Okay, and white robes were given unto every one of them. I think this is in the abstract, speaking strictly to their souls, because we know when we die, we are asleep. There is no Abraham's bosom. The rich man of Lazarus was a parable. It was it's not a real uh, exactified story like false pul pulpits will try to tell you. And white robes were given to every one of them as it was said unto them that they should rest for a little season until their fellow servants and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. And I beheld, and when they had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. So what are you getting now? You're already getting God's wrath. In chapter 6 of Revelation, you're already at God's wrath. And we know God's wrath is told many more different ways at different times uh, in the book of Revelations, trumpets and bold judgments and so forth. There was a great earthquake in the sun. Okay. And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth. So that's Skyfall, which is why James Bond had a movie called Skyfall. Sky is falling. It's God's wrath. And Adele sang the song, This is the End, because uh, she was singing for Satan, Lucifer. Uh, Lucifer, the female, shape-shifted version of the male, Satan. So there is a trans effect with that particular gender of the fallen angel, Satan. That's why that movement became so big. And the stars of heaven fell into the earth as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs and she was shaken of a mighty wind when you listen to adele's skyfall and you read the lyrics it's satan thanking all of the earth dwellers for loving him but really it's satan thanking the fellow fallen angels who have now possessed the human bodies and they've killed sheep but god's put an end to it so satan is basically saying my time is done thanks to everybody that helped me along <laughs> it's a very it is the strangest song adele skyfall based off this the sky falling adele skyfall is one of the deepest strangest deepest i'll say it twice songs you will ever hear because that's what it is it is satan thanking his fellow fallen angels or those humans that are still alive as they are possessed who uh were there with him at the end when this was taking place. Adele, Skyfall. So, yeah, and when you watch it, it's got all the stag and so forth. Um, it won't sound good on my... Uh, the microphone and so forth to ten. hold your breath and count to 10 so this one came with lyrics i'll put it down in the um description of this video 
and uh hold your breath and count this is the end this is the end this is the end and the name of the song in the movie is what skyfall and what are we covering so do you see how deep that is i just got goosebumps all over my body because i know what this is saying and what comes up over here is a suggestion can you hear me knocking who's that knocking That's Satan knocking at the door. Don't forget the Rolling Stones, sympathy for the devil, and all that good stuff. So, yeah. Oh, this is the end. Said it again, huh? Yeah, repeat, of course. So, after that, she says, or Satan is saying, or lucifer the female which adele is a female i've drowned and dreamt this moment well you always knew it was coming <laughs> um, i've drowned and dreamt this moment and uh literally says you may have my number you may have my name which is what 666 antichrist or satan or lucifer where does it say, um, you may have my number, you may have my name. Well, it says, where worlds collide and days are dark. Yeah. <laughs> Very deep. A thousand miles and poles apart. There, you may have my number. You may have my name. It's coming up. I know it is. But you will never have my heart. That's what it is. You can take my name. You may have my number. And the number is 666, isn't it? So I know it's coming up after this. I have to pop. You go more than six or seven seconds, they destroy you with copyright. You may have my number. Well, that's 666, right? That's Revelation 13, 18. You can take my name. So anyway, but you'll never have my heart. No, Satan never gives his heart to God, does he? See, Satan possesses the Antichrist. It's Satan. That's what Heisman Trophy, if you look at the letters that spell Heisman, it's he is man. Who is man? Satan is man. You'll never have my heart. I probably got this too loud. It's probably just destroying the microphone. But this will be in the description. And just, um, you know, just pray to the Lord, protect your spirit as you listen to it. It's all I can say. And um, but you you see how Mystery Babylon, <laughs> see how this world around you is, don't you? Thank you, James Bond 007, the seventh king of Mystery Babylon is. It's the Antichrist. That's right. And the stars of heaven fell to the earth as a fig tree cast off her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth and every great man and every rich man and every chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. And you know what? You see where it said in every bond man? Well, there's your James Bond right there, isn't it? Let's go ahead and look that up. I need to make sure to put this in your comments. So let's look up uh, what verse this is. It is 6.15. Is that what time it is? No, I said it's Revelation 6.15. That's the day after Trump's birthday, 6-15. June 15th is when 
Batman Begins. Imagine that day after his birthday. And so he begins. Batman Begins. And so let's look up Bond Men. 1401. A slave, a bondman, a man of serv servitude, metaphors. Go to the definitions. A slave, literal orphan. Now, slaves back then were just those that owed a debt. Voluntary frequently, their qualified sense of subjection, servitude, bondman, servant. Fascinating. Sorry, I had to take a quick break, but just imagine that. We just we just found out why James Bond has the name Bond. And on Her Majesty's Secret Service. And what does it say? He is a servant. This is just, I don't know if y'all are with me on this. I'm just either seeing something I want to see. Or well, we have definitely stumbled onto something in the world of Mystery Babylon, another decode, so to speak. And if we did properly, well, thank you, Holy Spirit. Just exposing more of their world. And every bond man and every free man. So slaves and free. But see, James Bond. And it's called one of the, you know, Honor Majesty's Secret Service was the big movie. Because that's what he always, he's always about um, the British flag, the country. But instead of God and country, and you, we all know who their God is anyway, or goddess, uh, Mother Nature, Mother Earth. But it's, it's. It's always to M, mum, the mom, who represents, you know, the boss, his boss, which, of course, who's the Antichrist boss, which is a woman, a man and a woman, because they switch in the Daniel Craig series. Goes from a woman to a man because M dies, so there becomes a new M. Anyway, and they said to the mountains and rocks, well, anyway, every bondman and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and rocks, follow us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? I love you very much. Of course, anytime, that's what I'm here for.